Parker was... The one word that comes to me is compassionate. A ray of sunshine, I think, is really the best way to describe him. He had a great sense of humor and was outgoing. He had a strength of character. He had a strength of discipline. Parker's all-time favorite movie is Winnie the Pooh. And that was kind of like my brother's like attitude about life. It was like, we want good food and I want good company. And after that, whatever happens is cool with me. I'm rumbly in my tumbly. That was my little brother. Sunday he started throwing up and 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 having flu symptoms. Because just couldn't get anything down, just lost a lot of weight. I think what was just so weird about it is because he was so healthy one day and then just was just so sick, just went th within two days, which was just unusual. Thursday morning when he woke up, he was he was not feeling well at all and just said, "Yeah, I just don't feel good." You, you just tell he was exhausted and that alarmed us a little bit. So we decided, you know, we're just gonna um, take him into Instacare. And then um, he walked into Instacare and then he collapsed. Right at like 11 to 11.30, 11 um, I just woke up with a start and I just felt something was wrong. Like I just like had this like feeling like something's off. The doctors announced we have to get him up to, air, we have to air flight him immediately. And then I got a phone call from my dad, and he broke the news, and he said that Parker had been into cardiac arrest that day. And it turns like just the time when he first went into cardiac arrest, that exact timing is right when I woke up with the feeling that something was wrong. I knew it was bad, because I mean, you know, you don't just get life right out of the primary children's because it's just a regular routine flu. Initially, when they had first landed, like, touchdown and life flight, the prognosis was he's going to be okay. I started a blog where I can let people know about what's going on. It was like liver failure, kidney failure, and we're told he has a really bad staph infection, and so they had pumped this fluid in there to compress the blood vessels to, like, keep the, the sickness inside the blood vessels instead of, like, spreading throughout his whole body. I just said, you know, tell it to me straight, you know, what, what's the prognosis? And the doctor, he said, you know, I've seen people, you know, recover from this and that, you know, best case scenario, he could be here in the ICU for another week and then the next week just in the regular hospital and then home and have a full recovery. And so... It gave us uh, some hope. Of course, you know, we thought, okay, well, I'm going to hope for that. The Tempview High School community shocked tonight after a beloved sophomore football player, Parker Allred, suddenly died early this morning. His family says he died from a staph infection just a week after getting the flu. It came on suddenly, starting with common symptoms, but in a week, the athletic and seemingly healthy 16-year-old Parker Allred had passed away. Parker was a sophomore at Timfew, played football and water polo. He is remembered as a sweet, good-natured kid with blue eyes and a witty sense of humor. The drive home, it was, to me, I felt like I was floating along in the car. Couldn't believe that had really happened. I don't know, I didn't feel like I was floating or anything. I felt like I was dead. I mean, I wished I was. It was just the start of a horrible reality. I just kind of felt like numb, like, kind of like empty. It, 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 for me, it felt like my world is in flames. I do not care about anything. The whole thing just seems so surreal and just that helplessness. And it's something just totally out of your control, especially when it's your child and 
As a parent, you're supposed to protect your child. You don't really know what it's like unless you've like experienced it, but it's like you just want to be sad. I kind of wanted to stay in in my my little world of despair because that felt really comfortable because I didn't want to forget him. Um, because I thought, if I'm happy, that means I've forgotten my brother, and I haven't forgotten, and I never will. I feel like so many times people would tell me, you'll get over it, and I couldn't, I just couldn't even comprehend the insensitivity of those types of comments, where even like three months afterwards, where people would be like, well, is it getting any better? I'm like, well, what do you think? Some people ask questions that if they heard the question they asked, I don't think they would ask that question because it was kind of funny, kind of abrupt, to, not rude because they meant to be rude, but that's how it came out. I had kind of assumed because, you know, Lane and I are both the parents that our experiences would, would be more similar. You know, like my mom and my sister kind of needed time to kind of be on their own and to come to grips with my dad and I, we just get into work mode and we just, you know, got things done. For Lane and Madison, they were comforted more by talking to people in groups, it seemed like. And then Haley and I were much more private and just kind of, you know, dealt with it individually ourselves. And then Sterling, he seemed to just want to pretend that nothing had happened and trying to make life go on as usual, as normal. I used to think that, okay, anybody that needs a counselor just needs to just kind of like toughen up. Any adult can like get themselves through this because this isn't really that big of a deal. But just, I was so tired of being angry. I was tired of feeling numb. I wanted to feel something. I wanted to be able to feel like a normal human being. I realized I actually really did need help to kind of help me through a process of returning to normalcy. Even though I knew that I needed to let people you know, grieve their own way, it, it was difficult to let that happen because I want to control it and protect everybody. That has been a struggle, trying to recognize people's different feelings and their emotions and, and respect those. When I met with a grief counselor and when they gave me specific techniques of here's how you can feel normal, but still you know, honor and recognize and remember your brother who passed away. It's different probably for different people, but just for me at that time, like when I would help people, um, I would just kind of get focused on that and that helped me to kind of get my mind off it. Like it helped me to go to the counselor, you know, that, that helped me and, you know, support of patient spouse and friends and family, you know, listening and sharing good memories with me so that I can, you know, remember those good times. He's crawling so well now. Anybody wants to talk about him, we just talk about him. There's no prohibition from, oh, we're not going to talk about Parker because that makes us all sad. It's a process, and we're going to cry sometimes. We're going to laugh sometimes, and sometimes it's both in the very same sentence. My whole life I had wanted to serve a mission for my church, but when Parker died, I was worried of whether I should stay home and help my family, whether I should go. I felt that I should go and truly being able to lose myself in serving others and in serving God, that's how I've been able to heal. That's who I am today. I would be completely different if I hadn't done that. You know, when Parker passed away, it felt like one of my legs was cut off. I honestly feel like I'm never gonna be the same because my leg's gonna be missing, but it's scarred over and you know, I'm trying to get myself around. Time is helping, but the loss, it is still as painful as ever and the sense that I want him here. It's unrealistic, I think, to think that things will ever be the same or back to normal or because you have to adjust to a new normal. <laughs> The biggest change I've noticed in all of us is that we're a lot more loving to each other and we're a lot more um, considerate of one another's feelings. I have been more concerned and I guess anxious. It was just a process of experiencing that and praying and having faith that we all have our own journey and that just 
you know, that, that yes, something bad could happen. And realizing that, yes, plenty of bad things are probably going to continue to happen as long as we're here, because that's part of what life is all about. It's life experiences, which are a mix of joy and happiness and excitement and great memories, but also pain and sadness and disappointment and things that, that don't go the way that we're anticipating. And that it's, it's, life is really a mix of all those things. <laughs>